Hello, in today's video I'll compare Polkadot with Ethereum, so let's go jump in. First let's compare sharding and scalability of both protocols. Polkadot is the first fully sharded blockchain protocol. In contrast, Ethereum is currently in the process of becoming multi-sharded network with the protocol upgrade called Dunk Sharding. Now when a network is sharded, that means it's capable of executing multiple state transitions in parallel simultaneously. So let's explain what state transition is. It is a change in the state of blockchain. It occurs when a new block is added to the blockchain, which causes the state of the blockchain to be updated. So state transition function updates the blockchain based on the transactions executed in the block. With asynchronous backing, Polkadot will reach TPS between 100,000 to 1 million. And similarly, once done sharding is completed on Ethereum along with layer 2 rollups, Ethereum is also expected to scale over 100,000 transactions per second. On Polkadot, each parachain is a heterogeneous chain, which means each parachain has its own state transition logic, while Ethereum will have homogeneous shards, which means all Ethereum shards use the same state transition logic. In the context of blockchains, transition logic is a set of rules and procedures that define how a blockchain updates its state from one block to the next block. Moving on to the purpose of both decentralized networks, each of them serves fundamentally different purpose. Polkadot is a multi-chain protocol that hosts multiple parachains and provides them with a shared security. So Polkadot allows for multiple, in future even hundreds of different protocols to coexist and work together within one ecosystem under one shared security. And each Polkadot parachain, aka shard, is specialized and optimized for a specific application, be it DeFi, social networks, digital identity or DAOs. Polkadot Relay Chain itself does not support smart contracts, but Polkadot ecosystem as a whole supports smart contracts through parachains such as Astar and Moonbeam. In contrast, Ethereum is a general purpose blockchain that hosts the EVM, a software for executing Solidity smart contracts. For the most part, Ethereum equals DeFi and NFTs. It hosts the majority of DeFi apps that are currently available in Web3, with around 60 to 70 percent of the total DeFi TVL being locked on Ethereum. As such, Ethereum is not specialized nor optimized for one particular application. It has been designed to serve as the blockchain for global coordination. So the primary purpose of Ethereum is the EVM that executes smart contracts that are a fundamental part of all Ethereum DeFi apps. Now governance and protocol upgrades, Polkadot and Ethereum could hardly be more different in both of them. Polkadot is already governed through on-chain governance called OpenGov. Each dot holder can submit an on-chain treasury proposal and also a proposal proposing changes in Polkadot's protocol and dot token holders vote on-chain and determine the result of the referendum. So on Polkadot, voting on referenda is fully on-chain and decisions get autonomously enacted on-chain. That means there is no need to trust that referenda decisions will be implemented as autonomous on-chain enactment provides 100% guarantee of that. And as for upgrades, thanks to the Substrate blockchain framework, Polkadot Relay Chain and also all parachains can be upgraded seamlessly through forkless upgrades, so no hard fork is needed. On the other hand, Ethereum still uses off-chain governance, meaning the decisions on the proposals about changes in Ethereum's protocol happen off-chain through online social discussions. And if these proposals are approved, they are implemented in Ethereum's code. An upgrade of Ethereum protocol requires a hard fork, which means upgrading Ethereum is a much longer, more complicated and painful process than in Polkadot's case. Now staking comparison, Polkadot uses nominated proof-of-stake consensus mechanism, which allows even small DOT holders to nominate Polkadot validators and receive staking rewards. DOT holders have two options to stake their DOT, either to nominate a validator directly, currently the minimum stake to receive rewards when nominating directly is 405 DOT. The second option is joining a nomination pool with as little as one DOT and still earn staking rewards, so DOT staking is accessible for everyone. 
Historical average staking APR on Polkadot is around 15%, which is around 8% net APR after deduction of Polkadot's annual inflation. Ethereum uses proof-of-stake consensus. ETH holders have three options to stake, both solo staking as a validator and staking as a service required to deposit 32 ETH. So the most accessible staking option is pooled staking with the minimum stake to receive staking rewards 0.01 ETH and the current staking APR on Ethereum is 4.5%. Now the personality of Dr. Gavin Wood, a true Web3 visionary in relation to both networks. In 2014, Gavin Wood coded the first implementation of Ethereum, became co-founder and CTO, and in his Ethereum yellow paper, he specified EVM. Ethereum launched in 2015, and he also proposed and helped develop Solidity, a programming language for writing smart contracts that run on Ethereum's EVM. Then he founded ETHCore, which later became Parity Technologies, and this marked his transition from Ethereum Foundation towards building Polkadot. In 2016, he published his Polkadot white paper, outlining his vision to build scalable, decentralized multi-chain network. He also led the development of Substrate, a flexible blockchain framework allowing developers to customize their blockchains exactly the way they need. Substrate makes it relatively easy for developers to build a unique blockchain for a particular application. Polkadot and all parachains are built using Substrate. Polkadot launched in 2020, this year Polkadot version 1.0 was completed and at Polkadot Decoded, Gavin Wood outlined his vision for Polkadot 2.0 that introduces concepts like core time rentals, block space and Polkadot being a supercomputer. More on Polkadot 2.0 in my video in the top right. So here is the summary. This video mainly aimed to show that both blockchain protocols are fairly different, mainly due to the fact that each serves a fundamentally different purpose. So the question which one is better is quite misplaced, similar as if we compared Bitcoin and Ethereum. Ethereum equals DeFi, it's a single general purpose blockchain for global coordination with the main purpose to run EVM to execute smart contracts, while Polkadot is a multi-chain protocol that provides shared security and consensus to all its parachains, and each Polkadot parachain is specialized and optimized towards a specific application. A big difference is also in governance and network upgrades, mainly the substrate blockchain framework and also the fact that Polkadot was launched five years after Ethereum, so that's five more years of blockchain technology development, this is what allows Polkadot and all parachains to be seamlessly upgraded without a hard fork. On the other hand, the fact that Ethereum has already been around for 8 years, while Polkadot only 3 years, manifests greatly in currently a big difference in adoption of both protocols. On average, there is between 4 to 500,000 daily active addresses on Ethereum, while in the entire Polkadot ecosystem, including all parachains, there is between 12 to 16,000 daily active addresses. That's been it for Polkadot vs Ethereum comparison, thanks for watching and giving the video thumbs up, see you next time.